tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads from over 200 countries and your number one source in after show entertainment. Three, two, TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! The creatures of the night! Oh, night! Oh, yeah! Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Guys, welcome to the Strain After Show. Oh yeah, let's boogie just for a little bit. Because this show just became the show it's always wanted to be and that we wanted it to be, but maybe didn't know how to ask for. Oh yeah. What an amazing episode. The Strain YMC. Season One. <laughs> Stop. No, that's we're not. Season oh. one, episode eight, Creatures of the Night. I'm Matt Lieberman. Uh, unfortunately, Jacob Baraski not joining us tonight. We miss her. Wish her well. Uh, and she should be back next week. Uh, for episode nine, but uh, we do have Stephen Lemieux here. Hey guys, Stephen Lemieux here. Yes, and Zach Wilson here. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, so gang, what a great episode. Uh, I I feel like there was something nagging at me every week. Like I've been loving the show, but I'm like, what is it that we're missing? And it's like this level of just serious nonstop tension. Uh, I loved how I loved this bottle episode. I loved this turn. This is like the moment when we realize, oh no, this is what the world is now. This is now a show about survival. This was a show about figuring it out and like investigating. And maybe there's some no. This is now. No, a sh go ahead. What's interesting about it is that I don't feel like it is there yet. Mm. And you're gonna you're gonna hate me for saying that, but I don't feel it's there yet. I feel like this is a contained instance that is actually happening only because it's retaliation for them shooting Eichhurst mm -hmm. and them trying to take out the Jew, the master trying to take out the Jew, or Satrakian if you're watching as well, um, because the fact that they can drive off and you still see traffic in the background, you don't hear like sirens everywhere, you don't see smoke, mm. I feel like they're still building and they're still gonna, there's still time for that huge fall. Okay. When it just everything goes to hell. So I we're feel like this is only a group of them who came out for this. We're not at the apocalypse. We're yet. not at the apocalypse. Yet. I mean, it's not the apocalypse, but at the same time, like, Having a show with all these small moments mm -hmm. with these characters that are all spread out, that don't really know each other yet, it's great for a while. But this is like all of our characters are together now. I think that's what Matt's, what you're really reacting yeah. to, is that now our characters are together, and whether or not they are in the apocalypse zone yet, or mm -hmm. they're in like the cleanup zone, or like the all out war zone. They're together, so that's the show. Yeah. Because the show is not the situation. The show is the characters. Yeah. Any good show is the characters, and now we have our team. I just hope that they don't... minus one. Oh, yeah. Wow. I just hope yeah. they don't like get in the van, go to the CDC, and try to blow themselves up. Because once they're together, and so now they're traveling, a Walking Dead we reference. don't need the Walking Dead right. again in this show. Well, that was you know I, I'm sure anyone who's a fan of both shows felt there was kind of a kindred spirit in this episode to a good episode of The Walking Dead, yeah. uh, where tensions are high and everyone's back is against the wall and they have to fight their way out of an impossible situation. Have to sever the, the brainstem. Yeah, that's what I was that's, thinking. That's, yeah. that's not a bad subtraction. It's not awful. It's not. It's not very good though. No, it's not very good either. <laughs> uh, so let's jump in before we even. Are are at the uh, at the gas station. Um, we're getting out. We're just picking up where we left off uh, in the subway tunnels and realizing, you know, like uh, ultraviolet light hurts these things. That's why tunnels are a good place for them. Um, and I love how. And and it's almost like oh f you 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 have to you have to bring it up and how it's not vampires it's viruses but at the same time he's a delivery system for one of the great strengths I think of this series is that you know they do make it plausible that this could be vampires but it is also a virus like uh, Chuck Hogan and Guillermo del Toro back everything up with more science that does make sense do you know what I mean like it's not just vamp you know it's giving a reason why vampires would react to UV light. It's not superstition, it's because the virus that transforms their bodies and that fuels them cannot stand UV light. 
Yeah. I like that. I mean, they bring, like, they said it really quick, and even I, like, I, like, tried to listen to it again and, mm-hmm. like, tried to jot down, like, okay, so then they react. And it's like, I didn't quite understand it, but it sounded smart. Well, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> viruses, when exposed directly to ultraviolet light, often die out. It's why they, they're, they work better inside, A, A, inside host bodies, and B, in the dark and in uh, dirty places. Yeah, I mean, you could just base it on the drying out, like, Worms when they try to cross the the road dry mm-hmm. out because they're not going to survive on like hot parched sun on um, cement. Yeah. But because these are not tiny little viruses that can't survive in the air, mm-hmm. these are worms. These True. are like fully realized creatures. So, yeah. uh, but I'm but I like that I got enough of an explanation mm-hmm. that I can now put it aside as right. like vampires are real. Right. It's it is a grounding device, but it's a good grounding device that we're coming at yeah. it from the perspective of a scientist and a vampire hunter. So you get both sides. Yes. And the one thing I was going to say is after last episode I said a lot about how oh they're fighting on the scientific and then they're fighting on the oh if you kill one the head, the rest die. Mm-hmm. I thought okay, well then I thought about bees and how it's like yeah. okay, well you kill the queen, the the worker bees kind of go they go, they go haywire, haywire, and if they go haywire and enter the sun, it kills them. And right. Yeah, so. I get it. Yeah. Um, Chuck Hogan, who's the co-author of the series, uh, wrote this episode. Uh, he wrote, uh, I believe, episode three as well, and he's got one more uh, in the can before the end of the season. Cool. Um, and just just a really great episode from him. So, they, yeah, they go to this medical supply store. They find it locked, and... Uh, F's like, well, I guess we're breaking in. The the cab just leaves them uh, stranded in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. And no, Smart, smarter yeah. cab than last episode. Yes, way smarter. <laughs> you drive away. No matter but who they are. He's driving away from just like some people. Nope. Who were just in his cab. Doesn't matter. They're a bunch of weirdos. You know, we got we got this old guy with a with a cane, cane with sword. a silver like wolf on it. No, no thanks. I'm I'm running. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They're probably that's probably a good fit. Fair. Yeah, I bet they got go to go all, all the way to Bushwick. All the way to Bushwick. It would have been go to Bushwick. What? They didn't go to Bushwick. No, well, but that's, that's what I'm saying. They were gonna gone. go to Bushwick. Oh, yeah, so that would have been a pretty good fare. It would have been good fare. Yeah, they would have so, fared well. So, so <laughs> F F smashes through the window. He's like, uh, "Be careful! There's gonna be an alarm." And then nothing because the place had already been broken into by Vasily Fett, our favorite. Baddest. Like his name is straight out of Star Wars. I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> He's dope. Um, and he's like, uh, you know, how do I know you're not looters? How do I know, you know, you're not one of them? And they're like, listen, we're here to requisition medical supplies uh, for a medical emergency. Trying to be all professional and all requisition. that. Requisition. The requisition. fancy white person's term for looting. Yes. And he's like, you look like looters. He's like, well, what are you doing here? He's like, looting. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And he was going to take 12 of these, uh, of these UV lights all for himself. And he offers to give them half. After some bargaining, Nora wheedles him, and he, he goes from <laughs> what three are you gonna to do? Give six. the old guy a light? You gonna give the old guy a light? Yeah. Why? Why not? Give him give him a light. Okay, I can survive with six. Yeah, I can survive with six. It, it'd be cute to see that old guy with a light. Yeah, I kind of want to <laughs> see. Like, as glad as I am that Vasily is now with them, I would have loved to see what he would have rigged up as his personal like like shield, like just a barrier of six UV lights all around him. Like he's got two mounted on each arm and like one on his front, one on his back. Oh, uh, there's still time. Yeah, that would be. He cool. looks like such a mountain of a man. He is a mountain. Like he literally looks like he could who could have been the mountain and. Game of Thrones, because he's just a large frame dude, so I feel mm-hmm. like if he does end up turning ever in the season, he's going to be a formidable enemy. Yeah, formidable foe, absolutely. And maybe one of the Chosen. Yeah. That was an interesting twist, the cho- whole Chosen yeah. setup, which, very interesting choice of words. Hmm, explain. Uh, well... As, oh, as, did the you, chosen well, the people. the Jews are the chosen right. people. Right, yeah. and so, I, of course, got chosen. <laughs> of course, is the chosen. Okay. I'm like, hmm. I see the humor. Um, it's yeah. new Disney's chosen. Well. Let him turn. Let him nope. turn. No. Nope. Uh, white so, gay rapper? Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> no, we had been debating this for the last few episodes. What is the rate of maturation? Why are there differences between these vampires? In 30 days, they'll be mature. They'll be fully mature. They're already getting smarter. Um, but, you know, even fully mature vampires don't remember who they were before unless they're chosen. Um, so like it's, I cursed. Like I cursed. Do you, my question to you is... Out of all the main characters right now, who do you think is going to be made into a chosen? And do you and 
Also, another main question. Hmm. Do you think that Bolivar is a chosen? No, I think uh, I don't know that that uh, that Bolivar is a chosen. He did speak though. He did speak. Nobody else after they've been turned has spoken. Interesting. That, yeah. At least that I can think. I, no. But why else would the is... powers be in effect so early? I mean, we I haven't mean, seen him in a few weeks. If the master wants the, them to turn that way, yeah. he, I guess he doesn't like he. Doesn't, He's not fully conscious yet. He's still in that 30-day incubation period. But if he was chosen early, he might just be allowed to keep, to, like, hold on to that It looks like we early. might find out more next week because it looks like we see I cursed and yeah. being turned. At least we'll Maybe. get the more of the how so that we can right. figure it out. Well, because, like, you would think then that it would be, like, the four people... Mm -hmm. Who survived? But three of them, are, of them are all gone. Left. Yeah. So maybe they were all those supposed four to be were chosen. chosen. That's why they survived. Interesting. It's um, possible that would be a good explanation because they haven't really gotten into why those four were affected differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's a very solid theory. If they were all chosen right off the bat um, and given more time to live, essentially, or more time to like change over time. I don't know. But but at the same time, though. You know, you look at them, and then you look at somebody like like Jim, who had been infected, but he hadn't turned yet, and like other people, like like Felix, who was infected, but he still hadn't turned even a day later. But they weren't turned by the master. Yeah. Okay, so they I think different they rules apply. They weren't like suctioned in their neck. I think that you turn faster if you're suctioned in your neck, and they can let more worms into your body. Got it. Yeah. Um, but also, what I what I think about is um, not with Jim. With, uh, I can't remember his name. The Felix? Witchel. What? Witchel. The actor. Witchel? Yes. What are you talking One about? One of the four survivors. Oh. Ludwig. Um, What's his name? Wait, who was on our, on our show? The guy who, the guy who c c collared himself in his shed. Oh, yeah. Ansel. 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 I don't, I yeah. couldn't think of it. It was tipping my tongue. <laughs> um, but he was changing and he was mid-change mm -hmm. when he was actually like, in control of his own thoughts and things like that. Yeah. And even after having changed, he could still talk to his wife. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so he kept okay. his intelligence these are, too, these are compelling. a uh, lot of them have just dove it in. They're just like, yeah. gone. The interesting thing, because we bring up once again that uh, the perverse nature uh, uh, of this curse is that you then the thing that tied you to the world and tied you to other people love in life then uh, is perverted when you've got this virus and then you immediately go and feed on the people that you love. I don't know that Bolivar loves anyone. Which he loves his fans. He loves his fans he and that's why he turned all them. Die. All of his, no, I, I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to the concert they throw with Bolivar. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's gonna be insane. A bloodbath. Do you think they're st you think they're still gonna put it on? Oh my god! Oh yeah, it's it's millions of dollars lost if they do. They're don't. finding excuses to cover up murder. They're putting that thing on <laughs> mm -hmm. no matter, no matter what. what. Yeah, he's a huge star. That's one of the reasons why he was chosen. And he's so weird that nobody really thinks he's different right now. Mm -hmm. Even while he's got a. 50 inch Steve Tyler tongue. Yeah. He's just, that's, that's, he's into that stuff, guys. You know, you gotta just respect. You know, in Hollywood, they get a little weird sometimes, mm -hmm. as evidenced by look, across the look, table. Look, Yoko. <laughs> look, Yoko. Stay away from his artistic demeanor. Well, I mean, if you think about it in terms of chosen, uh, um, and you look at the four people who were chosen. All I can think of is that damn show now. Yeah, exactly. no. Uh, <laughs> Bolivar is an international superstar musician who's going to be in front of large crowds and will travel uh, travel for work and could spread his disease very, very quickly. Captain Redfern is a pilot. Again, international travel, spreading the disease very, very quickly. Uh, Joan Luss, powerful lawyer. If she's chosen and she remembers elements of her past, then she would have been a useful pawn to uh, influence, uh, influence maybe not legislation, but sort of like the upper, ech upper echelons of the human world. And, and Ansel. And Ansel, who no one would suspect is chosen because he's outwardly, he seems to be perfectly normal. Together with their powers combined, they are the chosen ones. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here, let's. Uh, On Fox Morning it, Cartoons at 11 a.m. It would be the anti version of our team that we've assembled. Exactly. Kind of. Yeah. But I, I still think that there's a reason that the uh, Daywalkers went after Joan. Went after Joan first. Hmm. Because 
as far as we know first, right. because she was a chosen, I think. Yeah. Well, they know if they know Redfern's dead, if they could have gone to Ansel as well and found him dead, mm-hmm. and then she's the next on the list. And Bolivar's probably a little bit more protected. Yeah. As uh, a public figure. As a public figure, or, you know, they may have moved him because where he was was the site of a murder. A couple of them, anyway. True. Yeah. If, if they could, if they could, good luck. Okay. Yeah. Uh, here, before we move on, we get into the whole gas station thing because it's all one big, you know, long sequence. Uh, let's talk about iTunes, uh, folks. You know, we really appreciate all of the reviews and ratings we've gotten so far this season. Sixty-five so far, not we too love shabby. You. Yeah. But we got five episodes left to go. I think we can get to a hundred. I, I don't think can. that that's crazy at all. So we better keep getting to the iTunes. It's how we're able to get sponsors. It's how we're able to get guests. We have some great I, I like I'm so excited. We can't quite say it yet because it's not quite finalized, but we have some great people who are going to be coming in and there's always season two. It's a great way for us to get uh, on the same page with the producers over at The Strain. So continue to send us your ratings and reviews and you get a great shout out here on the show. You get a shout out because you are chosen by us. Because you're chosen. Yeah. Guys, shout out to GG Bean13. You guys have a great interplay and are having a lot of fun. I love how some of you read the books and some haven't. Good self control book readers. Das ist gut. DJ Bisogno. Loving this effing podcast. And I like how they say E P H I N G. Effing podcast so far. Effing podcast. They <laughs> said Das is gut. In, they actually spelled it out. Yeah, no, they spelled it right. Yeah. Das um, ist gut. <laughs> one of my favorite projects after Buzz is putting out smiled so big when I heard that you guys were going to do after show for this series. Hashtag the daywalkers are real. All right, and uh, from Nidish One, fun and just a little unpolished, be- or unpolished, because I feel like maybe that's like a show thing. No, I'm just no, kidding. It's unpolished. I listen to several AfterBuzz podcasts. This is one of the better ones. I love the recaps because I noticed a lot that I missed. Matt, Jackie, and Zach have already built up good chemistry. Steven is kind of a douchebag, <laughs> but uh, this is not just a recap. They sprinkle in a good amount of fun. Again, I reiterate that Steven is a douchebag, and the only thing that I was asked for is a report on the viewership ratings and news and gossip and how much of a douchebag Steven is. All right, Curly Thank you. Perfect combo. Hey, guys, I'm new to this podcast. I am so pleasantly surprised. I can be a picky biatch sometimes when it comes to the hosts on AfterBuzz, but you guys are great. I wasn't annoyed once. LOL. Looking forward to more shows with you guys. P.S. Jackie, so do you glad. happen to know when the next drag race starts? I'm so glad that that's the bar we've hit, is we have not pissed them off. <laughs> We have not annoyed them once. <laughs> All right, and uh, by Double the Jays, uh, a new watcher of the stream, but love this after show. I've been listening to each episode as a catch up, like hearing a different perspective on the show. Keep the good work. From Duskengard, awesome, but I have to say, Jackie, listening to an audiobook is not the same as looking, reading a book. The vamps that. Uh, spoiler, 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 spoiler. I love this podcast, though. The theory is the best part because they actually could make sense. Work that brain. Five stars for life. iTunes says I'm review yeah. 60, so crap. Uh, uh, I just want to say, we'll, we'll get into that comment after the spoiler wall when we're in predictions, because it is something addressing something we said last week, but that people may not want to know about. So. And our last re- new review this week is, these guys really put the effort in by Mark Mann. I'm up to the third episode, very impressed they got one of the actors to guest on the show, but with or without the crew is really worth listening to. Good, dynamic, thoughtful analysis. They definitely come up with the stuff I hadn't even thought about, and very respectful of spoilers. Also, Steven's a douche. It's not what he said. I don't think anyone actually said that. So he yeah. just, it's, that's how Steven feels about himself. He's, he's, he's a masochist. He's just you looking for get, someone to dominate. I don't get the shout outs. You get the shout outs. Oh, you get shout outs, pal. I know. Yeah. I just get shout out. I'll, oh. Sad. Okay. <laughs> Without getting sad, let's talk about this gas station. Immediately we set up, we, it's we set be hard. up. Yeah. Why is it going to be hard? To not get sad. To not get sad. Oh, because oh, Jim died? Yeah, <laughs> I, I appreciate I appreciate um, the producers of the strain casting Sean Astin, knowing that they were going to kill him eight episodes in, uh, just because like it's it's a ballsy move. You think, oh, he's safe. It's Sean Astin. They wouldn't just bring him on for eight episodes where he doesn't get to do basically anything. You know, they shot him in the head. Did yeah. they technically Several sever times. the brainstem? I mean, no, it was a few times. I think we got it. Right? I think he's, think he's, I think he's safely done. Plus, yeah. uh, apparently, Sean Astin cannot stay on the same show or movie for a long period of time. Not it's kind since of a the cur- Lord of the Rings. It's kind of a curse he has. If you've noticed his career. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, he was he shot the Lord of the Rings for like eighteen straight months. Since then, though. I don't know. When was he killed in the movie? Sean Astin. He didn't a, die. In the Sean movie. Astin's a great. No, I'm saying he's a great actor, but yeah. his career, he always, does, he never gets steady work. He's always doing new things. Mm. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. if, if this was a, 
a choice to write him off in the eighth episode or if he got something else that he moved on to. So well, I, I mean, the, the books were already out. The character, I imagine, died at this point in the books as well. Could be we an awesome Jackie, way. So we don't know. Yeah. Could be just an awesome way to, to have your career. Just like, ah, I yeah. did some stuff on there. And, and then, then I'm going to do this thing. And, like, I love my freedom. Cool. Maybe Death they just scenes. need an excuse for, for, for Nora to go, ah! You just, well, you can't stop. You don't like when me and Maestro scream. <laughs> You okay? That sounds like a goat choking. That is not what. That is not what me and Maestro sounds like. I don't know what's happening anymore. Okay, so they get to this <laughs> gas station, and um, and Abraham, when he finds out that uh, that Vasily is a is an exterminator, he's basically he's trying to be like, we should join the forces. Uh, Abe's got a crush. He really does, because he's got like a real disciple. It's like <laughs> F is never gonna be the vampire hunter that I want to be the proud papa of, but you, my son, you. You're my star quarterback. Yeah, and as we know. <laughs> Vasily is in search of a father figure who respects and loves him. <laughs> Hell who's yeah. Who's not an architect. Yeah, he's, who's not an architect. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe I like woodworking. Maybe yeah. I'll try woodworking. Somebody who's proud of, of his career. Exactly. Daddy, why don't you like my job? Exterminating. Uh, when he, yeah, when he says that he exterminated a couple of them, you could almost see, like, uh, Satrakian's heart grow three sizes <laughs> that day. You know? His uh, rosy cheeks. Yeah, oh, finally, someone who understands. These things need to be exterminated. They're not people. Um, and uh, Vasily's like, no, nah, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my own thing. As, as Nora said earlier, are we really at every man for himself already? And we kind of we kind of are for at least those in the know. Yeah, yeah. well, I think Vasily's also a unique case because he's sort of been on, like, on his own for a while mm -hmm. now. Like, he's never really had people that would be on his team. So yeah. this is new territory for him. Well, I mean, you remember his, like, we got to see his apartment briefly um, when he was first introduced, and it looks just like, I mean, for anyone who watched Almost Human, it was basically, it was like <laughs> this, like, dank, like, <laughs> warehouse space where he's just, like, l stocked up like a soldier. Like, he's got multiple, like, the the stick with the noose. I don't know. It's an animal control thing. But uh, he's got lots of stuff. He's got a whole arsenal. So I have to imagine that's going to be uh, their secondary home base, if not their their new home base. Because it's just fully stocked. The or, bread truck in the warehouse. Yeah. Or just a place where they have to, they're like, it's like overrun, and they're like, we got to break in. Break in, get all the stuff. <laughs> get the sticks with the nooses. They're called snares, but okay. But sn snares. I mean, those will be really useful if you have to contain any to like test stuff out. I really them. don't yeah. think they'll be very useful. Hey, Zach, I have your neck in a snare. What are you going to do? Fair yeah. point, actually. Yeah, yeah, super long frog time. It's not going to be very useful. I rescind that comment. Yeah, that's not the greatest They're idea. They're not zombies. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in any case, uh, we've got Hassan, who uh, wants everybody to get out of there. And for whatever reason, just like as luck would have it, Dutch, the hacker from a few episodes ago, who's the reason why the internet and the phones aren't working, uh, just happens to be there. Hashtag writing. Hashtag writing. Um, no, I mean, it's convenient, <laughs> but uh, these things... Things happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's literally like one gas station in New York. Let's be real. Yeah, I mean, Zach, you're from New York. It there's is only actually one gas fairly station. hard to find gas stations yeah, in New York exactly. City. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Um, so, uh, well, they blew the only one up, man. Yeah. <laughs> so before, um, before you know, Fett can get away. This Strigoi starts marching up on on Satrakian and. Uh, he starts mumbling, mumbling Yiddish at him, like usual, um, and uh, yeah, fires again. off a few nails, slices them, only to, uh, to realize they're about to get overrun. Vasily, using his rebar, smashing this dude. That looked like something straight out of like a Borderlands commercial, where mm -hmm. they would do a still shot right when it hits the head, and like you'd have writing on the blood. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> Wow. See, I knock stuff over like <laughs> Vasily. Yeah, but like he basically did what Gus did when Felix got got hit by a worm, right? Like it's a very messy way to kill yeah. these things. I have to imagine that that's gonna eat, that's gonna bite back at some point. No pun intended. It was intended. oh, just blood splattering. Yeah, back yeah. You. Like the white, the white blood splattering in all directions. It's even, not safe. Even with Jim, like he shot him five times, but the first shot was like, yeah. So like everywhere. They have to be really careful. Even one drop could could carry your death in it. Yeah. Do you think? I maybe. I mean, maybe Satrakian is gonna like give him a little lesson next week and be like, "Hey, 
mm-hmm. don't do that. I want to see them use a flamethrower. That'd be dope. I mean, we saw some Molotov cocktails this week. Yeah. Fire obviously works. Um, and, uh, you know, they're they're out there. They're trying to get everyone back inside. Jim, uh, using some quick thinking, strings together a bunch of extension cords, brings that first UV lamp out there, uh, and gets uh, frog-tongued for his trouble. Um, but he, he plays it off as if it was a, a scratch from the ground. That's um, all it takes. That's all it takes. Just one little scratch. Uh, and they get everyone back inside, and they realize, oh, man, our situation is dire. They're everywhere. How are we going to get out of here? Um, so Jim runs off to the bathroom to uh, clean his cut. Uh, meanwhile, we've got, uh, we've got the bread truck driver. We've got the bread truck driver. We've got Dutch's friend. Uh, they both want to get out of there, and they're not going to wait around to listen to reason. They don't care. Mm-hmm. So uh, the friend just runs out of there. And she gets away, like she's just she's just fine. She's just, look at look at her. Go- she's just fine, because the vampires don't give a crap about her. They're there because the master has tacked them, tasked them specifically to take out Satrakian before he causes any more trouble. This is a pure vendetta, like just a vengeance kill. It's like, hey man, we've let you live on this earth far too long. We're gonna swarm you, we're gonna smoke you out, and then we're gonna turn you into one of our own. And just to make it that much sweeter, I'm gonna make you a chosen. Yeah. So you have to remember how much you hated us. Oh, well, that would be some twisted. Right? How twisted would that be? If he, and if he could, that'd be really interesting. If you could remember, if you returned, and then given your memories mm. of hating, or maybe that's what the Daywalkers are. Ooh, interesting. Or in effect, like, give, they have their own free will to, like, go out and be like, no, we're, we're putting a stop. To right, this we insanity. hate what we are, and rather than just kill ourselves, we are going to end the scourge of vampirism. They remind me of the ghouls from it's the Fallout blade. series. Yeah? Fallout games. Mm-hmm. They remind me of the ghouls. Just, like, they talk the same, kind of, and they're like, they live with what they have, but they kind of just have... They have their emotions still. I don't know. I don't. I really don't know about the Daywalkers. We really don't have enough information to make any presumptions right. about them. But here's them. the thing, though. They're they're in, uh, at least some of them are intelligent. So at least some of them are chosen. Like yes. maybe not all of them. I mean, I still like the theory that he he is a the one that was speaking could be a competing master. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I liked that idea. I don't. Again, we don't have enough information to right. make any solid theories. We're just throwing out wild guesses at this point. I, I know, but, but like I just from his attitude and from the fact that he had a small platoon, I feel like if he was under the sway of another master, it wouldn't be another master. It would be someone who is working for another master. Oh no, I'm saying he straight up is another master. I don't. I yeah, disagree. I, don't think so. I disagree. He's he's far too like. He's just, he's too effective. He's not, he's not a general. He's, he's far a, too normal. Yeah, he's not a general. He's a captain. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's just the attitude I got from do him. Do you think mm-hmm. that, uh, do you think that when the Strigoi are matured, like their 30 days, they can actually stand up straight and actually be and fit in fairly well? I think so. I think that all the, all the other daywalkers who had, you know, their whole bodies and eyes covered up were not chosen, but they were fully mature. Okay. That's what yeah. I thought. That's the impression I got anyway. Mm. Um, in any case, um, we, we have, basically, we're trying to figure out what our options are, right? We got to get out of here. We got two cars in the garage. One has no engine, one has no wheels. Crap. Well, we can try to put, put them together and make a supercar, but we don't have a ton of time because the Strigoi are surrounding the building. They're, they're finding whatever way in that they possibly can. Uh, and we've also got another big problem inside of this place. And I'm not talking about Hassan being pissed at everybody taking everything. And it's like, uh, dude, Just who's keeping ke- a list? Who's keeping tabs at this point? You got Strigoi outside, the bigger problems. Okay, you know Vasily's. Uh, Wait, tr- what what problem are we talking about? But we have bigger problems Man, than you don't people know. stealing if stuff. People steal, that comes out of his salary. He's got to yeah. report back to corporate, and he then hope like, that they don't like blame him. An hour, Matt. You don't want to know how much paperwork that takes. It's probably a lot of paperwork. He's got to wait for the police. Yeah. Uh, but, but what bigger problems do we have? The Strigoi! All the all the, the things with the frog tongues. But inside, what 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 are you talking about? 
we got we got Jim. How about that? Is that a problem? Is that a big enough problem for he you? He can be cured. No, he can't. He can be mm -hmm. cured. You've seen what modern medicine can do. Yeah. No, you know you know medicine better modern than me. Modern medicine Jim. can do anything. Yeah. Ex Zach, you're supposed to play the, the the role of Vasily in this scene, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. Modern, we can we can cure him. We no, can you cure gotta him. kill me. We you gotta cure kill him. me. Well, I don't have a gun, but I have a cup I can throw really hard. That, I would really. <laughs> Please don't. No more Nora screams. Can we just can we just agree on that for the rest okay, of the show? Okay. Please. And so then, uh, then we get then we get the guy from Star Trek walking out. He's yeah. dead, Jim. He is a dead uh, Jim. Uh, uh, he's so, a dead Jim. But let's get back. Let's get back to the plot. So. <laughs> When they see her, when they see her get away scot free, uh, bread truck driver and Dutch are like, "Yeah, we can make it. We can make a run for the bread truck." So they they get the hell out of Dodge, and um, bread truck guy punches one of the Strigoi in the face, and then three other ones frog tongue him at the same time. And Dutch is like, "Oh shit!" And she tries to run back. Everybody's rushing out trying to help her get back. We got F with an, with a UV light trying to usher her back inside, and she trips. Uh, and they just barely get her back inside, uh, and then they lock the doors, and F's like, NOBODY ELSE LEAVES! Um, cause that's how, that's, he just always sounds like a whiner. We don't have, we don't have anyone for a comedic, uh, timing to be like, well, I guess they were going Dutch. You know. <laughs> I feel really, really ashamed right now, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry. Just a little while longer. And I apologize, Matt. That's good. I'll, I'll take a little more of that. Who names their daughter Dutch, though? Someone cool. I, you, I, it has to be a nickname. Yeah. Duchess! Uh, <laughs> I mean, I figure that's her handle that right. she goes by. I right. hope but so. I, I like the idea that her real name is Duchess and she just goes by Dutch. <laughs> Come here, Duchess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Jim comes out of the bathroom, seemingly fine, until we see a worm crawling up on him, and uh, Nor uses the UV light to notice, like, oh man, he's infected. And Jim's like, oh no. F's like, no, we can save him, okay? Uh, everyone else, do do your stuff. Idiot. Yeah. Um, you know, Vasily talks to, to Satraki and he just, he wants the rules. All right, so what do I do? I'm in this situation. I love how practical this guy is. Yeah, I really love that line. Like, he's just like, look, obviously there's something I don't understand here. Mm -hmm. Lay it out for me because you seem to have your stuff together. Yeah. Again, the son that Abraham wishes F was trying to be, but he's not. Yeah. You have to sever the brain stem. Yeah. Uh, and he's like the uh, the nail gun. Sever. Uh, yeah. And so, Home Depot. So, Home Depot. Yeah. Blake that was, Market Advertising helps too. Oh, come on. It was really funny. No, yeah. <laughs> it was good line. Um, yeah. Man, Lowe's should have paid more money. They could have gotten that product placement. I know, right? Yeah. Um, I got it at Lowe's. Save more hardware. I don't know. They're. Tagline. I got it at Walmart, which I save money using the Walmart savings catcher. Here, here's, my though. <laughs> here's, here's my question, though. Here's here's my question. So well, he's got to be running out of silver nails at this point, right? Yeah, I feel like he's like uh, can't I, have I don't think I saw anybody reload in this episode reload not once. once. <laughs> yeah, you know I wouldn't think so. You can fit a lot of nails in a nail gun. The nail no, gun, but, but the, the gun guns, fine, the pistols. Like, those are like maybe eight bullets, right? At the most, yeah. The pistols, yeah. Maybe a ten bullet. You know, clip, maybe, maybe they each have like six guns on them, okay, and they're just swiping. I don't think that's true, but also like, uh, also, great reload shots are badass. Yeah. Just <laughs> and granted, granted, right? So we don't we don't know how long Abraham's been preparing for this happen for this to happen. How long he's been having a pawn shop, melting down silver, and making nails and bullets. So we don't know. We don't have really have no idea what their supply looks like. They've been using up a lot of ammunition these last couple of episodes between nails and bullets. Like. I I have to wonder how dire is the silver situation. I mean, I have to think Satrakian has a pretty good store because he's had his little pawn shop, and it's well known, at least in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The old Jew who with the buys, pawn shop silver. buys silver, so he's got a decent set, decent collection. I wonder, do you can you go to like? I, I feel like I need to go research this. Can you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy like silver? No, no, they don't sell silver <laughs> don't by sell the pound silver. at Home Depot. You buy it from. 
other reputable sources like the treasury or things like that. I guess. I don't, know if you can yeah, buy I don't even know if you can do that anymore. You just pound buy, sterling. Yeah, you can buy like buy sterling, but it's mostly off sites. You don't really buy it from the government. You know, that whole time you're talking about that, I, we need to make like a spin-off film of like Satrakian Pawn. <laughs> oh <laughs> like god. Like those bad reality shows. It'd be a good commercial, It'd be a good promo for the uh, for the show. And Young gotta, Satrakian starting yeah. his store. Carlton Cuse has two shows on A and E, and they have uh, Storage Wars. Puts a window. Just a sign and hardcore pawn. We'll buy silver. Yeah. We'll buy silver. You know, this is a this is a nice silver piece. It's worth about five hundred. I'll give you five for it. Yeah. Five dollars. Five dollars for $5. my five hundred dollars silver. You know, I gotta sell it. I gotta take up shelf space. Yeah. I gotta make nails. It's a buyer's out of it. market. I gotta kill vampires. But it's with got it. diamonds in it. I don't need those. <laughs> I don't need those. You can have those back. <laughs> I, I I do have to because we're kind of off topic anyway right now. Yeah. I do have to say this. I I've been trying to download the video for episode three and edit this together to put it on YouTube. But just watching the beginning of episode three with that new Colby Collate song. Is like one of the most hilarious things you'll ever I see don't in your remember. life. Um, when Eichhurst is like putting on all his oh, makeup yeah. with the new song by Colby Clay, it was like uh, talking about how you don't have to try so hard and the music video is all the girls taking their makeup off. Okay. Uh, all <laughs> Just right, do so, it. You won't regret it. So uh, at this point, you know, F and Nora try to save Jim. They get right up in his face with a razor. F and Nora. Right, and they pull out the pull out the worm, and we gotta think for a hot second. Maybe they did. Everything's good. Maybe they saved him. They saved them. And they it's like great. Felix. Okay, this is good. This is practical information. Knowing that if we get the worm out soon enough, that everything will be fine. Not so. Yep. Uh, because how long was he in that bathroom? Maybe two minutes, three. Like not lo- not a long time. I mean. Long enough that like I I was just like that can't be the original worm still right by yeah. the cut those things move fast yeah. and you think they go right into your bloodstream to go populate go, 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 yeah go, go, yeah go, go, go. so uh, everyone is is you know figuring stuff out in the back when all of a sudden screams from the front shatter of glass they're distracting uh, distracting everybody while one of the the vamps climbs the uh, climbs the, the the pole to kill the power. Transformer, and, yeah. Yeah, to, to kill the power. And Satrakian's trying to shoot him in the head. And he's like, if you would stop distracting me. And he gets him in the head right as the power gets killed. And they're like, oh, crap. We've got maybe 20 minutes left on these lights. Uh, Vasily, what would you do? If you were in a situation, you're the one who's got the most, dare I say, combat experience WWVD. out of any of us. WWVD. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Uh, That's not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> so uh, he kind of sets up a sets up a plan. They start emptying out all these malt liquor bottles. They they give that task to Dutch, who's she getting, does a great job getting drunk while she's doing it. And uh, for the first time, uh, F is like, "Who are you again?" Yeah, like what? Hmm. You'd think F would be like, "Hey, who are you?" No, he's got he's got Nora right there. They've already got a thing. They got a thing going on. Yeah, it's beautiful mm-hmm. and spicy. According to <laughs> according to his wife's friend, don't oh, yeah, forget that sp- spicy side dish at work. Oh brother, she's ar- that woman is dead. She's she's already dead. <laughs> she is. She dead. is so dead. Um, so uh, yeah, they've got all these Molotov cocktails, and uh, they're getting ready to head outside when they realize that Jim. Uh, was not saved after all. Right in the middle of like where he's like trying to thank F repeatedly, like you saved my life. You're so Mr. good. Mr. Frodo, you saved me. Yeah, effectively. And uh, they realize that he's swarming with worms, and he's like, "You gotta kill me. You gotta kill me. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna kill everyone I love. He's gonna kill his wife. Gonna kill Sylvia. You know, like you gotta take me out." And F is absolutely against it. And you know, like Jim makes a very good point. You couldn't save Redfern. You can't save me. Kill me. And, uh, modern medicine. Modern you medicine. can get to a hospital. Modern it doesn't, medicine. It doesn't matter yeah. at this point. Like, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, and I feel like last episode and this episode and probably the entire first season is about F coming to accept that everything that he knew about treating viruses and everything that he knew about handling the sick is no longer relevant, and that he cannot treat these people as people anymore. That there is no treatment. Him accepting that he has no power over whether or not people die once they're exposed to this virus. As somebody who has seen 
and conquered so many viruses and that has been his modus operandi for so long to have to accept it has to be incredibly difficult yeah. and we get another one of those big moments when you know he sees the bread truck driver struggling on the ground and he just pops one right in the head i think that was a big transformative moment for him mm -hmm. if you will yeah um because he essentially had to do exactly what Vasily did. Yep. Now he didn't know this guy. This guy wasn't like trying to help them. He did sort of. He did ditch them. But he actively. could see it in his eyes that the guy wanted to die. Yeah. Like the guy wasn't. Mm. No, he was clinging. He was to clinging life. to he was life. Like, I don't. It, to me, that was. I don't want to die. But like, if he doesn't, he's just going to become a Strigoi. Yeah. To me, it was like, help me, help uh -oh. me. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. in pain. Uh, and yeah. this was. It's helping. Yeah. Like, I think he has to, have finally, with that moment, sort of came to terms, at least to a limited extent, with this is helping. Yeah. Killing them is helping. Well, them. I think the key line of this episode is like after Vasily uh, kills Jim, it's when F says, Who gave you the right? And that's to me, I think, is the last thing that's tripping him up. Is like, like I get it. Once these things are Strigoi and they're coming after us, I understand, you know, firing to defend ourselves. But when it comes to actually taking someone's life before they change, we don't have the right to kill these people. And Vasilius is basically saying, is like, I did what you couldn't. He was not a person anymore. And if he, this was the Walking also, Dead, we would have spent three episodes on this decision. He also wanted to die. Yeah. That was the other thing. Like, he, he wanted was to actively die. like, you have to kill me. And that was a nice little redemption moment yeah. for Jim, who, like, I actually think he felt like he deserved it. Yeah. For better or worse. Oh, 100%. Like, he was just like, oh, I'm... I've been infected. I, it's, I got my my com my uppins have come. So this mm -hmm. scene though, they end it with the commercial break that was kind of abrupt. It's just like, bang, Nora scream. I didn't do it. Bang, 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 and then commercial. And you're like, that's it's intense. Happened. Yeah, we're like, that just happened. Whoa, it's extreme. Damn. Yeah. Uh, but they have to gather themselves because there's not even enough time to uh, be upset about it because we gotta go, man. And it, we've got this kind of like ring of UV lights, guns, nail gun, rebar, and we are fighting our way out. We fight our way over to the to the uh, <laughs> to one of the gas pumps, and we have this great real real world moment where he's like, uh, "Anyone got a credit card? I'm having issues with my with my credit. It's in dispute, you know." Why well, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, so F gives him his credit card, and of course, uh, Vasily <laughs> goes for the premium gas. Which, like, I mean, how much more flammable is it going to be? You're fighting vampires. You don't need to get the well, premium. Well, he's just like, well, I've always wanted to hit the premium button. Yeah, I've always wanted to do Have it. Have you ever and gotten also, premium? What? Have you ever gotten premium? Yeah. Really? Yeah. This car takes I've never gotten takes premium. premium. Yeah. No? Never, never. No? I've never hit that button. Never oh. hit that button. It sucks. You it's like it's the it. apocalypse. <laughs> you might as well hit the premium yeah, button. Yeah, seriously, it's money's like not going to matter. It's why... Hey guys, sorry, a little audio blip there, uh, but we're back in. So Hassan, just basically, he gets crushed by Strigoi and then blown to pieces. He just, <laughs> he just, he felt safe in his little bulletproof box. Yeah, probably well, not was... bulletproof above. But... No, it wasn't. It was but... just ceiling. It was just ceiling. You know, this really reminded me of Helix. <laughs> of Helix, yeah. <laughs> A lot with with the with the vectors, but uh, yeah, poor Hassan. Vasily was the only one who cared. I do want to mention before they leave the gas station. Nick, mute your microphone, by the way. Um, they uh, freaking Satrakian has some of the best lines in this mm -hmm. episode when he's talking <laughs> to people. He's like, "Do you want to stay or do you want to die?" Yeah, I'll give let's you a put choice. It to a vote. Yeah, let's put it to a vote. Awesome. So they get out there, they're firing in every direction, Nora's light goes out, and Pitch Dutch... Pitch black, Pitch yeah. black, that's what this is referencing. Mm-hmm, and, like, Dutch runs over with her light, and uh, they get this gasoline, throwing gasoline on top of the Strigoi and throwing the, the Molotov cocktails. Great. F gets inside the truck, he opens it, everyone piles in, and they drive away uh, with, you know, just the skin by the skin of their teeth. Not victorious, but alive. They're alive. They're alive, except for Jim. In their little Wilson's uh, bread van. Yeah. My favorite thing in this whole episode <laughs> is just like this Wilson's poster that's uh, that's in the gas station, and it's like, without Wilson's, it's just a stack of meat. <laughs> is that what it said? That's what it said. But like for most of the episode, they cut off the without Wilson's, so it just said, a, it's a stack of meat. 
like oh like four times in the episode and it just made me laugh really I mean hard. that it's is a on stack the of meat. Yeah, it's a stack of meat. It's a stack of meat. Hashtag it is stack on of meat. The Wilson family crest. Yeah, without Wilson's <laughs> it's just a stack of meat. Can you imagine <laughs> if this episode was called Stack of Meat? <laughs> It's hey man, considering all of the uh, the strigoi that fell out of the ceiling, right? Yeah. It would kind of work. Instead Here, of creatures of the night, <laughs> oh night, night. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I I have a thought. Um, do you guys think that the the truck? To me, that's like the new armored van that they're just gonna like rig they're up. They're gonna as beef like it up. A no. massive anti strigoi machine. They'll, I mean, maybe they'll find something a little more secure, but it, it would be a good place to start. If well, you no, didn't you, know. Ephraim's son has celiac disease, so he can't have gluten, so not going to beef up the bread truck. I don't think they're going to beef up the bread truck, though. I really don't think that's going to be the thing they use. I, mean, I think there's something much more badass that Vasily probably has. Sure. I mean, it just, well, I feel like you take the things that he has, and if you strip down that truck, like get the bread storage junk out of there, it's a big steel box mm -hmm. that if you like, you could carve like some slits in the side, you could rig up any kind of, any number of different light fixtures to the out, outer edge. I mean, if you got big old a no Gatling gun on the top and just like a turret and you spin it in all directions. But you could, and you could even like, if you found enough yeah. silver, like put like silver lining on it so mm -hmm. like Sherroy can't even touch it. Like, That'd be it, dope. It could be an amazing armored vehicle. Yeah, do you see the potential here? I, I see the I see the silver lining. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and on that note, we go to predictions. <laughs> Working with you, <laughs> it's the worst. Yeah, well, you have to be. And now you're after Buzz TV prediction. Oh, there's no sound effect. <laughs> that was the sound effect. That was the, that sound was effect. the sweet, smooth, buttery a... voice we can spread on some yeah. of that bread wagon bread. <laughs> yeah. Of and I missed an opportunity. I missed an opportunity for a pun when you said, "I'm the worst." You make your. Uh, you are the wor. You are the make your own worst. Do you remember the sandwich? Make your own worst. Yeah, the yeah. sandwich that he made him eat. Anyway, or he gave him. He didn't make him eat it. The last episode, regardless. Predictions. Uh, yeah, so now we got the whole crew together, um, but we still have. Yeah, but we have the dangling thread of Matt from two from last episode, who likely had gotten turned. So you know oh, we totally forgot about right. him. So we have what? this like reinforced thing of like you week. come back and you you hurt the ones that you love. Who does he love? He loves F's wife and son. Snap. Does he love them? Oh, yeah, he does. Okay. He considers himself part of that family. That's why he overstepped. See, if I got turned into a Strigoi, I'd head straight to Chili's for some baby back ribs, which I love. Stop it. I'd murder them. Stop it. Uh, any other thoughts on next week's episode that aren't stupid? I, I think mean, Matt's fine. Okay. I don't you think, think he's Matt's fine? turned. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't assume he had been turned. I figured he got away. Okay. In some like I think he, I don't know how how long he will last. Mm -hmm. But I didn't th I didn't foresee him. You figure right that there. if he was gonna get turned, it would have been in that episode. They wouldn't have just cut on the cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think they would have showed him. I think honestly. Matt's probably smart enough to run like hell if he sees those things running at him. Because if I see really pale people with like sharp teeth and like big ass tongues shooting out of their mouth, I'd probably run. So you would never go to a Slayer concert? Uh, nah, probably okay. not. Yeah, okay. You mean a Kiss concert? <laughs> but okay. Yeah, whatever. Get your metal bands right, Matt. It was <laughs> White Snake. It was White Snake they were playing earlier in this in this episode. Okay. Um, but as far as that goes, though, do you think when Matt turns, who's going to have to put him down? I mean, I think it's got to be F, right? Yeah, F's gonna He's going to love it. <laughs> He's going to love it and hate it. <laughs> He's going to have to do it in front of his wife. In front of Whoa. his kid. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's what's going to make it tough. Is he's gonna be like, listen, he's infected. We gotta put him down. And Zach's gonna be like, no, he's like, he's new dad. And and what? And his wife's gonna be, Jessica's gonna be like, like you're just doing this because you're jealous and because you want him out of the way. It's because you're mad at him. Yeah. I. What if? What if? I'm just gonna ignore that. What if Zach has to do it like old Yeller? I know. I was thinking that too. He has to like too. take him out back. Like Carl. Sorry, boy. <laughs> like Walking Dead, Carl, mm -hmm. with his mom. That's a spoiler that we didn't need to have because some people haven't watched The Walking Dead yeah, that far and didn't know about. that you... that was what happened. And also, we had a nice thing about respecting spoilers for people who wanted to watch The Walking Dead at some point. Why did you say that? Guys, it's three years down the line now at this point. Okay. Come on. It's not three years since that part. Yeah, it is. No, it isn't. That was last season. No, it wasn't. 
It was season two? Yeah. Pretty oh, okay. sure it was end of season two. Please. Anyway. All right. In any case, uh, folks, I think that's going to wrap up our show for this evening. Yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be back next week with an all new episode. Uh, Make sure that we're going to see uh, the Master Origin story. Yes, it's going to be I awesome. So. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Lemieux, where can the people find you? You can find me being a goofball every week here on the Straight After Show, which Matt wants to kick me off because <laughs> of. Uh, my name is Stephen Lemieux. You can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux, S T P H E N L E M I E U X, or on the MasterChef and Graceland After Show. If you're not watching Graceland, you need to because it's a really good show. Okay, and Zach Wilson. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson, T H A T Z A C H W I L S O N. And also here at After Buzz, uh, I've got the Leftovers finale coming up next week, MasterChef with Stephen Lemieux, uh, Dr. Who am I doing with mm-hmm. Matt Lieberman? Doctor Who Classics. Oh, what's hosting. the first classics you're going to be um, doing? We're going to be doing An Unearthly Child, the very first Doctor oh, nice. Who story ever. For any for fans that haven't delved into that, we're going to start right at the beginning cool. and just get jump off running. Um, and then coming up in the fall, I'm going to be doing some other fun stuff. Z Nation on Sci-Fi, uh, Grace Point. Yeah. Instead on of Fox. Land. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. With a, a bunch of people. But, and then some other stuff coming okay. down the line. But, Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. You can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman, M A T T L I E B E R M A N. You can find all my videos for SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on YouTube. You can find me here on Ray Donovan, Under the Dome, uh, Doctor Who, and The Nick. Thank you all so much. See you next week. Goodbye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. Night. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here. And be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.